14. So I'm quite excited years. about that. So yeah. there we had a very specific um, space-based um, target. What are some of the most exciting technologies that uh, you've seen? Are, yep, I've heard of and seen images of the green laser uh, airplanes no, no, that are doing some of the shallow water work. Um, yeah, we've seen things like Drix. We've seen things like yeah. um, no, they, they, you know, it just doesn't stop. I've, I've been at this now for you know, 40 years or so, um, but uh, you know, the, uh, I haven't seen any stop, and, and perhaps quite an acceleration of the the change of technology. Um, the, the whole uh, I started long before the introduction of multi-beam sonars. Yeah. So. When I started, they were just what we called single the beam sonar. You'd get one ping, one depth, and that yeah. ping of sound covered a very large area of the seafloor, but you just got one depth back. You yeah. didn't know where it came from in that big, think of a flashlight you know, expanding, yeah. and in, in, that, in that big area of, in the flashlight analogy, illumination, and the sonar analogy, insonification on the seafloor, and there's one depth. It was the f shallowest part somewhere in a, a circle that's kind of half the water depth. So if you're in... 4,000 meters of water, you have a two kilometer circle there and you get one depth and that's it. So you get this very blurry picture. But then there was uh, in the early 1980s, uh, kind of out of the military world came uh, the multi-beam sonars. And that just absolutely revolutionized our way to map the seafloor. And we've seen tremendous incremental advances in those in terms of more beams, narrower beams, faster signal processing, real-time 3D visualization, those kind of, the, 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 the jump from single beam to uh, I've come up three meters so far. Yeah. And there were a Clicking whole bunch in of incremental slowly, yeah. changes. And now we're seeing another that's set 30 of meters what could, potentially could be uh, real revolutionary changes, and, and that's in the platforms delivering them. Uh, and so up, things oh, like started at 27 that can there. really um, make, them, make their use much more ubiquitous um, and hopefully cheaper and more efficient. That's a He's huge got game the, uh, changer. The Z, really the soft. Low Earth orbiting satellites with the high bandwidth transmission. We yeah, always we had this bottleneck of getting changes. information back. He always does off that ship. to smooth and it out. And I'll be going along auto altitude. Da, 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 yeah. and he'll come up more than it can, can come up, and I'll just we can bam, sit plow, as we right did here. last leg in New Hampshire and operate a, a vehicle out here in the um, Pacific. Hold on, with full bandwidth transmission so that's a huge game changer and the kind of things you've mentioned which uh, really uh, have only been introduced over yeah, the last 10 or 15 that. years um, and that's the use of lasers now uh, for measuring because the we're uh, and and actually seafloor imagery so there are two because we're moving oh, two the time. innovations they both are constrained to very shallow water it's you need uh, clear water light has doesn't to matter and the navigate closer through the water, but we are there there's airborne laser uh, systems the less it'll that Yank if the water is clear enough, uh, tail, and, and they build some very high, we're high that powerful ones. Data, and I've we're seen the deepest so depth of 70 that meters off on Australia. Side. A small but change in the heading really skews the multi-beam data, so we're trying to smooth um, that. Yeah, so if we're closer, it's not detailed uh, dragging the tether the through the water. And so that's more a like an arrow shot through the water than a... And then we have now satellite imagery. Standing on a surfboard. Or where people use images, actual pictures of the seafloor, and by understanding how Why light we is way attenuated to in the, uh, different bands, if you have multiple of the bands ridge. of light, blue and green, coming back um, with a few Didn't we want to like go points, down the ridge? You can actually come up with a model that says, I, c I can basically take a piece of seafloor <laughs> that I see on the image, and by seeing the difference between the blue but and the green besides. attenuation, estimate the depth. And oh. this, is, uh, this is becoming very powerful too now. Um, and again, it's just shallow water where the waters are clear mm -hmm. enough, zero to maybe 10, 20 meters. Mm -hmm. But the key is that these are the places that are hardest to measure with the sonars. Yeah. Because the sonar right. makes a fan. But so where are we going to come back and up? That and that fan is typically four or five. Are six we, gonna, times are the we water missing bed. the ridge? We're going to come so back up. So when we're working in a thousand meters or two thousand meters of water, we're mapping. Because if that's the case, we have meters all at once with our with our sonar. But if you're uh, in 10 meters our... of water, you're only mapping 50 meters at once. So it takes a much longer time to map in shallow water uh, in the same in the same area. So we have that those big innovations there. We're coming up now or down. And then 
then we're done. Dan, uh, I assume Dan's not on SPL. I think Dan's on SPL. Yeah, he's on he SPL. He's on yeah. SPL, so we're just talking right over him. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. <laughs> how long is that going to, how far is that? Um, do we want to do introductions? Yes, we should. We should at least once a watch, kind yeah. of run around, do introductions. Oh, that's Taylor Ann, do you want to start right? us off? Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Taylor Ann. I am the science manager and data logger on this watch. Um, when I'm not on the Nautilus logging observations during our dives, I am a master's student at Cal State Northridge, working on microplastic pollution, and also a research assistant at UCLA. Um, I'll pass it all over to you, Larry. Yeah, so I'm uh, Larry, so Larry Mayer. Really I'm uh, the watch leader on this watch, and uh, my day job is as the director of uh, the Center I for Coastal uh, Ocean click Mapping in, at uh, the which University way do of New I Hampshire. Click in some left? And, and you heard from my spiel that that's a, a place that specializes in developing uh, seafloor mapping and, and water column yeah, mapping we'll be, techniques, because uh, that's the other big, left at big innovation I didn't talk to us, is our so. ability to look in the water column now, too, not just the seafloor. Jonathan? Um, I'm Jonathan Feely. Um, I'm the Ocean Exploration Trust's uh, media producer. And um, on this cruise, uh, I've had the real honor to um, work with a, a fantastic team to develop this camera system that we're testing on this cruise, NA-156 Exploration through Advanced Imaging. Um, the Office of Naval Research uh, offers us the funding for this project, um, which is All to right. develop uh, and we have on board three camera systems, um, three different cameras right now in Herc. I am up oh, to uh, later on you'll be able to see in Satfeed now. One um, two of those cameras, which I is a pair up, up of uh, stereo cameras. They each uh, record at 180 degrees, and we'll get this truly immersive viewpoint. And on this uh, expedition or this dive in particular. We're going to be using those cameras and another high-resolution imager right. that's currently on the brow of Hercules, so that top light bar uh, looking down, and we will be doing some advanced uh, 3D uh, photogrammetry reconstructions of this area. So hello and thank you to everyone. Ale? Hi, I'm Ale Martinez. I teach seventh grade science in Eagle Pass, Texas, and I am the science communication fellow. And I'm going to be reading your messages that you type into that box on nautiluslive.org. So if you're watching on YouTube, head over to nautiluslive.org and ask us some questions. We would love to answer them. Tim? Oh, it's starting to step sideways. Hi, I'm Tim McGeehan. I'm an oceanographer. I work at the Office of Naval Research. I'm sitting in the science seat uh, right now. But uh, yeah, this is really exciting. You know, not only do we do fund a lot of research and the development and pursuit of knowledge but there's also lots of times in doing that you have to develop new equipment or technology along the way so you can keep pursuing you know pushing the edge of science so this is really exciting uh testing some new technology right here and we also get to tap into this trust uh, this brain solid. trust of so experience uh it's got a lot of time see time working at these depths doing some pretty amazing yeah. things so it's uh it's a good test case, and we're happy to be here. Thanks. Manal. Hi, everyone. Uh, sorry, I'm going to adjust my audio levels really quick. Uh, my name is Manal Morangi. Yeah. I am the video engineering intern here. Well, no, you're still very, very soft, Manal. Yeah. Can I'm you make it louder? Soft. How's that? Is that better? No. No. <laughs> Gosh darn it. If it's not one. They, we got a comment that Larry was a little quiet too, but then I think you got a little better. Okay. Okay. Just let me know. Um, how's that? Is that better? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Manel Morangi. I am the video nice. engineering intern uh, here on the EV Nautilus. Um, I am a filmmaker and photographer uh, back in uh, uh, Maryland, the DC area. Um, so I'm responsible for, uh, you know, changing up what you see on uh, sat feeds one, two, and three. Um, so, you know, maybe, so when, uh, when we start doing the photogrammetry with uh, sat triclops, my bad, um, I'm gonna, s um, gonna switch that to sat three. Um, and yeah, super happy to be Come here. Down. down five. I don't know if Rai is on SPL. Or we could just skip. Ryan, are you on SPL? What's he want to do? 
Hey, yeah, I am. Hi, everyone. Yeah. My yeah, name speak is up, please, right? And I am sitting in the Ant Atalanta um, pilot seat right now, and so I'll be managing the bird's yeah, eye view of what we're like doing 10%. today. Okay, Dan, are you in our... Uh, Dan, in the hurt chair. Oh, are we introducing? I was yep. off talking to the bridge. Dan had a quick, Go ahead, Chris. quick, quick hey. intro, so uh, Chris. Hey, <laughs> I'm Chris. Uh, I'm a navigator and uh, high resolution mapping specialist here. Uh, so yeah, I work on controlling direction of the vehicle, or organizing the movements of the ship and the vehicles, and uh, also doing the Hercules-based mapping systems. Okay, I think he's we've covered uh, we've covered everybody now. He's I basically think. come all stop there. Yeah, it looks like it. No, he still is coming. Point five. We're, we're just about. Five. We're probably maybe a hundred meters from uh, our waypoint, which is supposed to yeah, represent he, the, the, the very very tip way. of this ridge crest. Yeah. So. Um, um, and again, we're doing a, a multi-beam sonar run now. That's why you're not seeing much uh, of the seafloor because we're standing off. What are we about 25 meters off the bottom? 38 meters off 38 the bottom. meters off the bottom um, to let the sonar get a uh, much wider range and then when we're done with the sonar mapping we'll uh, we'll get closer to the bottom and, and start getting the imagery for for Jonathan yeah I'm gonna have to stop Chris okay that's fine we're gonna start getting tug here I'm down to 10 percent so our depth right now is 619 meters speed? I don't have it. No, I don't and have it. And the temperature is 6.28 degrees Celsius in the water. An easy way to see it. We had some kids okay. asking questions I'm about the temperature it. of the water and some of the interactions. I'm starting to I love it. Maybe, maybe should we, uh, that six, that six point, uh, what was it say? 6.7 you said? 6.27 6 Celsius. Yeah, that's Celsius. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if we have to, uh, uh, someday we won't have to, but maybe for now we have to translate that. So it'll be 12 yeah. 40. 42, 43 degrees, mm -hmm. something like that, Fahrenheit. Still a very cold bath. If you yeah, it's cold. <laughs> so if you were uh, swimming uh, off the big island here in the surface ocean water, it would probably be on the order of, let's see, something like 25, 26, 27 degrees, and we're down at 6. I don't know, I don't know what the... the the water temperatures are. Anybody know? Oh, that's a good the, question. Uh, it's on your Grafana uh, data stream there. You can I'm sure the Hawaii Tourist Bureau is constantly advertising the. <laughs> I don't know. Kristen, maybe Kristen can hear. She's in the lounge. Kristen said that this area was not warm enough for her. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, she wants to, to go to warmer six waters. Degrees, so. Oh, dear. <laughs> six degrees is uh, what we're reading. You can get all that information on uh, in the back row. You can get it on the uh, ship house uh, graphs. There's a link from ship house to get to it. Oh, I, I was wondering what the temperature was at the beaches of Oahu. You know. Oh, sorry, I thought you were asking Hercules. Yeah, no, 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 no. We 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 knew the temperature outside here. We were trying to compare that. To temperature around Hercules right now is six degrees centigrade. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, I can't see what he's doing there. Average water temperature in Honolulu ranges from 76 to 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, wow. Looks like he's moving again. So that's warm, that's nice. Ask him if he can make uh, point three. Seventy six would be twenty four. All right. Celsius and eighty one would be twenty seven.
bridge, bridge now. Is it possible to make point three now that we did the heading change? Yeah, let's just check. So what kind of food item do you think you're gonna, we're going to see today? Since we've had our pizza boxes and our club and onion. <laughs> I was like, did I hear that correctly? Or am I still just thinking about food like always? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a lot of my observations are comparisons. Yeah, the foods. noodles. Remember yeah. the noodles? And yeah. the noodles. <laughs> we had the, the, I think the... Uh, onion. Yeah, blooming, blooming, the blooming onions. The blooming onion was... Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the most appropriate, pizza it really boxes. did look like a blooming onion. It <laughs> Cake <laughs> layers or pizza no, boxes. Pizza, I, mean, yeah. I like the pizza, like tons of pizza boxes. I'm yeah. just playing around with the petting and the uh, uh, camera. To we'll have to stay tuned to find out what food item <laughs> yeah. comparison we will make today. We got the next four hours. Two meters now. <laughs> we got a longtime viewer thanking us for everything that we're doing. That's right. Uh, it's awesome to experience this without having to actually be on boat because they get seasick. And another view is asking if anyone saw the massive amount of fish just before bottom. Taylor, yeah, do, you, yeah. do you know what fish they were talking about? Do you, uh, like, do you know yeah. anything about that type of fish? Yeah, they I were, think they, they were, were grenadiers, right? Yeah, grenadiers, rat tail, rat -tail yeah. fish, yeah. That was just uh, just tons of them, just as it came to the top of the seamount. Yeah, I saw the tail end of that footage. Yeah, I saw a little bit yeah. of it, too. <laughs> Flickering between From three and the, four beams there. The lounge. Yeah, I've never seen a, a school of grenadier. I've only ever seen like them alone, isolated. Um, maybe a cluster of two, but never schools of them. I, I heard they were like rubbing together and kind of brushing against each other, but maybe that was the chaos of the lighting from the <laughs> ROV. <laughs> Could it be like they're a little better for the heading or something? Yeah, wagon? yeah, that's yeah, a good that question. Was, uh, Zach, about the same. One of the intern, oh, yeah. uh, ocean science intern Zach Taylor, he, he thought that maybe it oh, was a, a spawning event uh, or some sort. Um, so that's some footage we can look back on. I personally haven't seen all of it, so I'm looking forward to seeing that in the highlights. Now that's not something Jonathan's going to produce in 3D because they're moving. Yeah, not so, no, so the, the not whole concept 3D. of photogrammetry kind of falls <laughs> apart. The idea is to get multiple <laughs> multiple uh, captures. Um, of a of an object and put it and put the parallax together to, to, to determine its depth. But if the object is moving, you, you that's don't. not so much. I would. I am hoping to try to get that footage to shore so that we can share it on so our YouTube. Um, we can faster. actually create and publish videos as 180 degree monoscope. So we'll see if that works. We're very bandwidth limited, and these are extremely large files that we're recording, so that we can uh, make sure that we have as much data as possible for any of these observations that so we make. Does that mean you can kind of 
alter the, your perspective in the video? Is oh, that yeah. That is? No, okay. if you, it, you can scroll you, either with a mouse, you can grab the, the video itself and kind of peer around. Or oh, cool. if you're wearing a headset, you could do it quite naturally. Nice. And the cameras are set up. You'll be able to see it later on once we get back uh, into okay. full uh, drive mode right. on the bottom of the sea floor. But they're oriented, so they're about eye level, uh, as if you're standing on the porch oh, that's awesome. of ROV Hercules. <laughs> so you see all the giant lighting bars and both of the manips. It, sh it, should, it, it looks really good. That's awesome. <laughs> so I was just looking up uh, grenadiers or rattails, and uh, interesting, they say... Um, they may be solitary, or they may form large schools, um, and so, and that's particularly true of the round-nosed grenadier. Oh. So maybe that's what we had. Oh. We certainly had a large school. Hmm. And the benthic species are attracted to structural oases, and the tip of a seamount is indeed a structural oasis. Look up a little. Okay. The main, so it's fine. So watch. Wow, some of them live 56 years or more. How big are they? They range in size from about 10 centimeters, about 4 inches, to 2.1 meters, 7 feet. Oh, so wow. It's quite a range of size. Yeah. They're, they're, they're different types. It's, yeah. Uh, Several attempts have been made to establish a commercial fishery. Yeah, it's hard to tell the largest species, the tether or the PID. But it's considered unpalatable. Yeah, I, b I believe they, they tried to change the name to Grenadier from Rattail to make it make more it, yeah. palatable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, the name might be palatable, but yeah. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> not the fish. <laughs> not the, not the taste. Induce yeah, them. I don't eat seafood at all, so and, I wouldn't and know. And the subfamily as a whole may represent up to 15% of the fish population. Tuning them on the fly is just a crapshoot because yeah. of too many external forces. That's about right. Static I've seen quite a few grenadier uh, on the dives that I've been on in comparison to any other external species. Force yeah, it's probably, uh, I have to say, it's the most common fish I've seen. Yeah. But but I've never seen it in a school before, though. Yeah, me either. Yeah. I but haven't had a lot of luck with that. Well, the fish uh, for lunch was really good. <laughs> Probably was not. It was not. <laughs> not going to do All right, no. That's interesting. They actually have muscles around their swim bladder, and the benthic species are thought to strum their bladders to produce a sound, which may play a role in courtship and mate location. Part of the issue is uh, we don't have Herc and Atalanta. Yeah, maybe up. that was a concert so that we stumbled upon. Yeah, yeah. 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 maybe, uh, maybe they heard the ROV, and they heard the ROV and said, whoa. <laughs> And to, uh, <laughs> What's that Shakespearean quote? Yeah, if music be the fruit of love, explain. play yeah. on? Some, Ooh. Something like that. Uh, give me a minute. I like, in this control room, the variety of people that you have. We've got Shakespeare quotes, and then I'm firmly stuck on a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've been in Disney mode for a couple of days. Listen, I have four-year-olds. This is the best time of my life because I get to watch all of the classics again without too much shame. <laughs> so I'm going to have the ship hold position here because we're over our waypoint. Three, we're, yeah. we're kind of Let, following on yeah. along well, the, yeah. the ridge crest. You see that on the sonar. All right, and then just and I like how a there's a tiny Try little Hercules over. right there yeah. for yeah. scale. Yeah. Try back over what? Well, the ship has already passed the waypoint. Right. right. So, I mean, you're going to... bearing to the next one. Well, Wait. okay. Are, are, are Larry, are we going to land? No, I don't think there was any intention to land unless there was... Uh, we might want to stop, just take a take a look to see if there's something worth seeing, but I, I don't think we need to spend any time there. Nope. I think the idea was to just head on down that All right. Those valley. are some cool little uh, mini... Uh, well, I guess... Structure. Yeah. 
Just yeah. do it. What are we doing? I don't know. They think we're just going to go start going down. Yeah. Well, I think we want we want to get right now the. We want to come down yeah. the hill for a ways yeah, yeah, with the you're, caveat. Yeah, you're just about that, at uh, the waypoint, I guess, now. Yeah, just make sure there's nothing there interesting back. to model yeah. and then yeah, and head if down. Yeah, if it won't hurt your map in, Chris, if we could just get down a little closer to the bottom. Just yeah, we to can do that. Just take a look, take a look around. And then All right, uh, I'm gonna hold, I am going to hold here for a second then. Then I'll do the change after you take a peek. Oh, we're okay. going to come down to the bottom yeah, and yeah, take yeah. a peek. Got it. Bridge, okay. bridge nav, hold position. Yep. So this is kind of the... The apex. I think you're heading around to uh, 330. I do see a little ledge off there down. Yeah, there. Yeah. yeah, that's really cool looking. If you that, ah. may be, that may be one of our, uh, just one, just like the outcrops we saw yesterday, the, yeah. the, the flows. Yeah, and you said the what we thought we were seeing were not dikes, correct? No, I don't think so, because, uh, and particularly if, uh, if this is so indeed your orientation like that, they're horizontal. Right. A, a dike is a vertical. Um, Mm -hmm. is vertically injected and the yeah, dike will cut across the, the bedding. But if you remember, everything we saw yesterday was, was parallel yeah. to the bedding. And so yeah. what we were seeing was, you know, probably a series of I flows and then on, you know, other I deposits, think. flows and other deposits. And the, the, the other deposits are eroded yeah. and it leaves the flows sticking out. Now, how it's been tilted and twisted by the time we see it, I don't know. But I, I don't think they were injected vertically. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. So what you're looking at on feed three is uh, what we've been mapping to kind of get a better idea of the terrain around here. Uh, and you can see some sense of, of stratification. You see the horizontal layers there uh, in the yeah, upper. Uh, well, we have a question. Why do both Atalanta on, and Hercules get sent down come and not up. just one? Yeah, so the idea of having a, a two body system is that there's lots of motion from the ship and despite the fact that we have well not that much now a thousand meters but when we're deep two three four thousand meters of, of cable out meters, delta. the motion of the ship is actually transmitted down that cable and so if we just had hercules at the end of the cable every time the ship moved up and down we'd all get seasick watching it the lights would come in and out and everything would be just moving around too fast to, to compensate for. But by having Atalanta at the end of that cable, it's taking up that motion. Then coming out of Atalanta is a neutrally buoyant tether, that yellow um, tether that we can see sometimes in the images. Come on, and that clockwise, up to decouples, that. it separates Hercules from that motion. So Hercules can stay very, very still and we can get all this tremendously precise um, imagery. This come around clockwise. Right. And Atlanta also has a camera on it, so it kind of provides an eye in the sky for us, so uh, we can uh, look down at, at Hercules. That's absolutely right. That's a, that's a very good point. It also gives us that wonderful perspective of where Hercules is in, in the scene. Ooh, rock. Yeah. I like rock. Better than mud. <laughs> well, that's that, that's that little ledge that Chris uh, mapped out, I suspect. Yep. Found it. <coughs> Let's come around. Can we get a little closer and take a closer uh, look? Stand by. I have to determine. I'm waiting for an answer from Robert. Uh, okay. I might have to do some tether management here. All right. I'm going to have Standing a look at by. the tether myself. Mm-hmm, bobbing along, bobbing along. So on this map that we have here, what's the difference between the yellow and the green? Chris, do you want to answer, or do you want me uh, to Oh, so, uh, 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 yeah, go, go ahead, Larry. I'm yeah, okay. working on some stuff. Yeah, so, so the colors represent different depths, um, and so the, the darker or the warmer the color, the deeper the depth, the, the hotter or the brighter the color, the shallower the depth. So the yellow represents shallower depths, the green deeper, and then as we go further along, it will maybe turn to blue. Um, I don't, we, haven't seen, we haven't seen the blues, and if we got shallower, it, it would be red. 
So you just think about the colors as representing uh, differences in depth. And you, that's added to by seeing it in perspective like this. So you can see how the relative to Hercules, the yellow is above Hercules and the green uh. is below it. Yeah, stop, I'll stop. Yeah, so you can see the blue coming in there at the far yeah. end, going down slope. And if, if it would see further, it would get even darker blue. And we call that a color map. So we're mapping the color to depth. And Chris could change that color map. It could, it could be different colors representing depth. But this is kind of a standard way to look at uh, depth differences. So now that we're we're off the very uh, peak of the ridge, we're starting to see on the sector scanning sonars the the wall that they'll they'll follow down. One of the viewers is commenting that um, only Atalanta was used at the the midway dive. Yes, that, that's that's true because uh, Midway Dive was very, very deep and uh, Hercules is not rated to those depths. Um, um, it looks I, like somebody from my hometown is writing in because they're asking about a teacher from Memorial Junior High. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead. You talk to them. <laughs> yeah, hi. I, you're probably from Eagle Pass. And so, Dan, can you hear me okay? What's that? Yeah. No, are you in a position to chat for a second? Negative. Negative. Stand okay. by. All right. No, no rush. No rush at all. So is there a reason why they only used Atalanta at that dive? Those dives on the uh, midway dives? Yeah, because uh, Herc it's too deep. It's too, Herc okay. Yeah, and we, we do have Little Herc, which we were going to use, um, but there was an issue with its port bottle. Um, so we just, you know, had to do with what we had, hey. the tools. Um, and so we were able to use Atalanta uh, for those dives. And it was, you know, an extraordinary opportunity um, because the weather window with using such an ROV like a tow sled um, like Atalanta uh, the weather window or the ability to dive during extreme weather or just any type of weather is a little bit small or a lot smaller than diving with the two manned uh, you want me to uh, two ROV move the ship system. so you don't have to so chase Ar Ar Argus down okay um, the ability to actually get to those sites and to have such great weather was really amazing that we were able to pull all that, that off for all three dives. Um, yeah, the footage was amazing. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, we were really impressed with how well Atalanta was able to light up the, the wrecks and how we were able to get that great footage. Well, I think you got to give Jonathan some credit there, too, because I think there was, lot, there was lots of motion originally. <laughs> And I suspect I suspect you worked wonders. Uh, yeah, pulling the motion out of the, that it, imagery. It's actually quite remarkable that the camera on Atlanta is um, uh, a little bit older, and um, Atlanta's motion going up and down uh, obviously wasn't ideal. And then uh, the light, how the light separation, light to camera separation, results in a, uh, sometimes a kind of washed out image. But today's advanced. Artificial intelligence-based uh, de-interlacers and upscalers are, are quite amazing. So that's actually what you're seeing um, in those highlight videos is some some pretty advanced stabilization that's come across to to help stabilize video over the last just the last five years, being able to rescue some some pretty awesome detail. Yeah, it emphasizes again the importance of a team and in, in doing this type of research. We couldn't have done it without the video side and the production. And yeah. Um, yeah, just the footage that we saw uh, versus what they edited and, and clarified was just stunning. Um, they really 
brought that to life and uh, yeah we're really really grateful that that was able to happen were you out there yeah oh yeah. my god that must is so cool in the it, control it room it really was i've never seen any type of archaeological dive being done so that was amazing to be a part of that team absolutely amazing what an opportunity yeah, yeah. And, and we'll have some of that on the end of this leg as well yep yeah we'll be possibly at some, some wreck sites too it, it to me the the, the neat thing was it, it reminded me of the old days. I wasn't there, I just was following along. But we would often go to sea and, and it's a very, very stressful environment. It's a very harsh environment. Things, inevitably it's high technology. Inevitably something will go wrong and you have to make do with what you have. Exactly. And I thought it was really, really cool about how, you know, the plan was to use Little Herc, but when that didn't work, we were able to come up with a a scheme that that really saved the day and, yeah, and, yeah. and saved the mission making do with with the tools you had yeah it made it much like that much more rewarding um mm -hmm. and us realize how rare of an opportunity it was to even go out there and who attempt it and it's been attempted several times and has not been able to you know uh retrieve such footage and uh, yeah we were able to do all three planned dives it, it was extraordinary yeah yeah we get we get that question a lot in the interactions like what do you guys do if something goes wrong or if something breaks and it's really all about teamwork. You know, yeah. there's all these people coming together to try to find a solution and, and problem solve together. And it's like everybody contributing that that makes it possible to be successful. Yeah. And I think, you know, OET, they do a pretty good job of, you know, not pointing fingers when things go wrong. Um, instead, we figure out how we can make it right. Um, and I think that's a really good mindset to have because yeah. things will go wrong, especially in the nature of, yeah, ocean research and exploration. Um, so it's always important to be flexible in these environments. Yeah. And it looks like one of my students wrote in, but you didn't put your name, so I don't know who you are, and I can't give you a shout out. But hi back. If you're just joining us, we are at 633 meters depth, and we are mapping these awesome formations. And if you're looking at feed three, um, you can see tiny Hercules right there for scale. Okay, apologies there. Some, uh, okay, you're, you're sorted out, Dan? I'm um, not sure, but... All right, just let me know when. It's okay. Got 
Plenty of patience here. Yeah, thank you for your patience. Uh, we had some, uh, sometimes Atlanta uh, takes a holiday and puts uh, turns in our tether. And we we're having, yeah, we we're just having some general weirdness there. Just wanted to check with Robert, make sure that uh, I wasn't about to do anything silly, which I've been known to do. But, uh, yeah, we're all good. Long story short, we're all good. I think I'm still not convinced we don't have a turn in our tether, but we'll keep an eye on it. And if you see a pigtail there or a, a twist in that tether, uh, we'll keep a weather eye on that for a while because that can cause the lights to go out in here and a lot of work on deck. You're looking at the, the buck cam there? Uh, I'm looking at the, the way the tethers the big, the big behave picture. in between yep. uh, Atalanta and Hercules. Mm -hmm. So, and then, I don't know if we had a, it, Atalanta was uh, not responding to heading input there. It would turn one way but not the other, so I don't know if we got some current up here on the top of the ridge or it was too far away or a combination of both, likely. Uh, where am I in the zoo? I'm, uh <laughs> look, I have a map. Turn and come to the uh, high point here, and then come back to the north underneath Atalanta. In theory, uh, no, you can just look. Uh, you're ha I'm good with you looking straight down. So it, it's a certainly an unremarkable, area. unremarkable seafloor here. Um, I think in. in there was some hope that the, the crest would be very rich in corals and, and crinoids and things like that, but it's certainly not what we're seeing. Um, come up, come up five while I'm right underneath you here. I think what's happening is we got some good, maybe the wind's blowing pretty good here. And, and Atlanta wants to come one way and not the other. And so you have a big current, which is certainly not unusual at the top of the seamount. So far from this distance, it seems like um, I'm seeing some basket stars, which is something that we haven't seen. Um, but I definitely will confirm that as I see a few more pass by. Some sea stars clustering on corals. Those are some pom pom are, are anemones. Those, are those urchins? Uh, that I think I can't tell if they're urchins the, or the pom pom anemones. Oh, yeah, okay. hey, you you want to see a really neat feature of Hercules that we sure. haven't seen on this expedition? <laughs> sure. I'm gonna come in and just because I can do a really rough, brutal so, landing. Boom. You, so you're actually landing on the seafloor now? I just smash the seafloor just like it does when we land on deck. <laughs> <laughs> Video full zoom in. Jo Jonathan's wincing here, but. <laughs> and we're not all cringing because I'm not smashing. Okay, so now hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of cameras to what bits. Is that? <laughs> uh, pom pom an enemy, I believe. An so an so an let me an look an up enemy. the scientific name. Yeah. So uh, I always get these confused with the Corallomorphs as well, though. So given uh, the uh, either uh, the pom pom an em an an enemy, an enemy. Thank you. <laughs> is really nervous, or there is a whole lot of There's current. A lot of current, yeah. Yeah, and I yeah. believe the latter to be the... Yeah, I, I would agree. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, we have been starting to see a few coral uh, now, so hopefully we'll see an increase in, in the communities here due to the current. Yeah, and given our uh, struggle to turn uh, Atalanta around into the breeze there, uh, so I couldn't turn, I couldn't turn to the... And we don't have a to way to directly measure current on the, on the vehicle. 
Savonius rotor or uh, electromagnetic. It's a really cool instrument for any uh, people with checkbooks out there called the Valleport Current Meter. Mm -hmm. Real time current while you're moving through the water. Right, so this is a lip liponema. So it is an enemy. An enemy. Um, yes. So now that I'm directly under you, uh, you want to try and bring your head to the left and see if it will just give it a few clicks to the left and see if it actually responds. See how the thrusters are pegged right now? So I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. So you're trying to work your way to waypoint two now? Or Can't so? get there from here. Yeah, we're going to try to get to waypoint two, and then yeah, I guess we'll go off bottom and start surveying right. again. Yeah. Yeah, but you, uh, yeah, I think you're right. It's quite, quite the, quite the breeze here. Yeah. So that. Oh, there it comes. Yeah. So that appears to be current related. <laughs> Think about it just like yeah. you're on a mountaintop. That's where the, the big winds are going to be. You know? Just stick your head into the atmosphere. Here we're sticking the peak of the mountain yeah. into the currents. Yeah, that's what's happening. Okay, uh, you can go wide. Thank you, Vinny, for the fantastic zoom. Seems like there's a little bit of color in the rock there as well. A little red alteration of some of those rock crumbles. Yeah, look at that. The flow. Jonathan, are you in here? Yep. Jonathan's here, yeah. Remember me struggling right before the dive there with a light that I said was going to cast a shadow from orbit? Yeah. Yeah, there it is in the cinema camera. Mm -hmm. We need elephant well, ears. I, but I guess you didn't try hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Jonathan. I was pressured to get the ROV up. Yeah, Jonathan. It's always there's a little, it's better. But it's always an excuse. Always the archer, never the arrow. Or always the arrow, never the archer, sorry. So our general bearing is going to be uh, off of this cliff here. All right, here we go. Is that what I'm hearing? Is this... Uh, Let's... No, you're... Yeah, you go due north to get to the peak, and then we'll... And then we'll turn. Yeah, okay. and then we'll turn and look yeah. down. Well, yeah. Do that's, you need me to... That's north. Yeah. Do you need me to dun. tow it Atalanta over a bit more? Yeah. I don't, okay, yeah, I guess it's hanging farther back than I would have thought. But that's because we have a very uh, stiff breeze. Gotcha. <laughs> like, Atalanta can't bring its head around stiff breeze. Let me right. uh, come back under Atalanta and then so Maybe that's here. part of the th issue with the. Uh, You're not even into the shot. You need to. That like, is oh, also why the like heading's wagging forward. about because yeah. we're the sideways in it. It's and flagging. All that current. Yeah, totally flagging. <laughs> yeah. Reach well, we got a question. Five zero that meters, three five zero. Uh, about the size of that lipo Nima. Affirmative. You know, I'm not sure if we had the lasers on, no. did we? No. You can't get uh, DVL speed. Smaller than a bread box. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, yeah, I got the impression they're quite uh, small. But yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of no, an I object. I don't have somewhere easy urchin to size. view it. Yeah, about right. the size of an urchin. Too bad, because with this current, I might be able to break my two knot. Um, I've yet to, I haven't been able to get Hercules documented going over two knots. It's like always 1.9. I mean, I'm logging, and we can I can get the raw values. I, I have it. I just uh, actually no. You know what? I do. I can plot juggle it. Plot juggle, yeah. That's it. Yeah, let's plot juggle it. Let's plot juggle the heck out of that thing. All right, you ready to plot juggle? Yeah. For anyone listening, this is Chris in his element. <laughs> 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 A new yeah, problem. A new solution. Right. Plot juggler. What are we plotting? Uh, Science. We're yes. trying to break the her world Hercules speed record of <laughs> two knots. 
Twist. Twist. So one of the things I was going to ask Dan is that nope. we're going to. I want to come. Uh, we're we're we're. Okay. A method to our madness here. We're not displaying. I'm trying to get under Atlanta and get. Uh, Right now we can't get Atlanta facing around the way we want to go because of the current. So um, exploring some options here. We might have to trail Atlanta. Okay, I'm trying to uh, come down five meters now. Yeah, you're lateral. Yeah, all right. Yeah, you're lateraling. Okay. So yeah. I I already got where I wanted to go. Sorry. All right. Red is lateral, blue is forward. Yeah, come down and see if you can uh, come around and look to the north. Still not coming around. Yep, heading left. Still not coming, is it? What is going on here? It just it doesn't make sense. Try and go the other way. Maybe it's a compass issue. Dan, you're moving Let's a different direction than you're heading. Let me play with it. That's me playing with it. I haven't seen that in quite a while. Um, it's possible we have an issue with one of our Atlantis. I'm just going to try one more thing here. It's like what Atlantis uh, thrusters. Today's a great day. It is a great day. Look at us in here. Everybody's COVID negative. No masks. Oh yeah, no, no masks. I'm, I'm <laughs> jonesing right now. I do need a nap. Don't we all? Wow. So I can't, uh, no matter what I do, I can't get Atlanta more than uh, 20 degrees or so off of 135 full power uh, loose tether. I, I'm not 100% convinced that's current, but uh, it is what it is. Okay, so what are the options then? Uh, Number one option is to ignore that, so we can still obviously move around. Uh, you just won't have that eye in the sky, bird's eye view. Maybe it's just because we're on the top here. I don't. I, don't I, know. I suspect if we dip over, it'll get much better. But um, yeah, I just wanted to verify because uh, we don't want to get you in trouble, though. So I didn't want to get myself in trouble. It's, but. Um, mm -hmm. I've done, I think, all I can do here. Okay, Chris. 
pick a ranch and bear and go. All right. Uh, so, Larry, do we still want to look for the peak, or is this peaky enough? Well, if it's going to be difficult, let's dip over and maybe get out of the current. If, okay, if so. You, if you think you can easily make it there, then. I well, would, if we start, yeah, if we start the Norbit, we can come up and then mm -hmm. move off the off the side. Mm-hmm. Okay. Does that sound good? Yep. All right. Yeah, let's just go straight there. Uh, so what I'm going to do, right, is I'm just going to stay under you. Mm -hmm. So we'll keep that 20 meter delta or so. Uh, uh, you want to be up at... Uh, 30, what were you at, 35, something yeah. like that? Yeah. So that was working pretty well. So can you come up... Uh, Little fish. 20 meters. Up 20 meters, please. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna be coming up Bigger off the fish. bottom now to optimize the mapping again for a little while, and then we're gonna get off this peak and hopefully out of this strong current. Alleged strong current. Yeah, I'm not quite convinced. Some of the behaviors I would expect would be the tether blowing hard over, and I wasn't seeing that when we came down oh. uh, close. Uh, you have to come up Battle station. Me, uh, have to come up a little faster. Are you recording right now, Jonathan? No. Not yet. I have quite, a, quite enough uh, recordings of the blue water. water. <laughs> <laughs> Usually an Aaron SCF, deciding that this was a highlight. <laughs> and that I did not so highlight strong. blue. And on some watches, this is the highlight. Oh. Well, we've already had better. Yeah, we had the anemone. And we're doing mapping for the most part now, so. Did you just say we had the anemone? Yeah. Well, did you I highlight that? Yes. Oh, no. What if that's it our was highlight, beautiful. Jonathan? It was beautiful in the in the current. Every, Don't make every, me highlight. I will highlight oh, all the cucumbers just oh, for no, you. Just, no, oh, no. And I'll, I'll put in the little description. I, I for think Jonathan, I've only seen lots of love. one four. <laughs> real sea cucumber Sorry. that was floating through one of the headless chicken bearing. monsters. What's your bearing going to be? Have we seen any other cucumbers? Again. I think that might be the only species we've seen. Yeah. Little floaters. We got one that hitched a ride on the front of the uh, yeah, fish eye lens. Oh. Yeah hanging on for dear life with the little cute little tentacle suckers. It wanted to meet you, it's biggest fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he ruined like at least a thousand oh, images. Sure. There's just this sea cucumber just hanging out on lens. <laughs> he heard you talking about his people. Or they, yeah. they heard oh. you talking about their people. That's true. <laughs> the or should cucumber, I say cucumbers? <laughs> cucumber mafia is going to come for me. Or venture the cuke. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can make that movie. Yeah, <laughs> Revenge of the Cube. Here again now, <laughs> Bruce. Turn up, turn off your, uh, turn off your auto head. Uh, yeah. The audience wants you to sing some more, Jonathan. Oh, all right, I'm taking requests. <laughs> so I've tried for a year, and I'm not going to give up to get uh, permission to use. A song from Disney from uh, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. <gasps> I remember bobbing that along, movie. bobbing along down in the briny deep of the beautiful <laughs> sea. <laughs> They're like riding on their bed at the bottom of the sea. Yeah. Do, 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 do we still need the copyright do, if you just do, sing do, it while it happens? Do, do, do. <laughs> I know you watch, so I'm in charge of our YouTube and I'm going to get a copyright violation yeah, if I'm singing over yeah. Sorry. Uh, someone wrote in there needs to be highlights just for your conversation. You should have me singing because it would be unrecognizable. Oh, no. no I'm, sure, I'm sure you yodel like a fox. So. Oh, yeah. Which, by the way, foxes just go like... There are a lot of foxes in my hometown, and I have woken up in the middle of the night to tell my dad to turn down the TV because I thought he was watching some, like... Gory movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Someone said, "I love the camar camaradery y'all have. Do you all work the same shifts together?" 
Yes, this is the 12 to 4 shift. Welcome to the Dragon and 4. Yeah, it's really great doing blue water. We get to know each other a little bit more. And, uh, yeah, the banter is always fun. I think I can see your tether in the fisheye right. lenses. I don't know why it suddenly would settle out, suddenly start. The ship's not no. moving, is it? Yeah. For sure not moving. What is that? Well, why did it suddenly start? Look at Atlanta just took off to the north. Oh, there's too too much happening now. I don't want to hurt the ship. Whoa. He looks like Eagle Swallow now. Ah. Beer up. Well, that's like totally Beer blown out. Beer is off. <laughs> that doesn't make sense either. Ale, you, yeah. you oh. neglected to introduce the audience to Slow Mo. I haven't. Um, so this is Slow Mo. Uh, you can see him on feed three. He is uh, my almost class like mascot for my like kids back at home. Uh, he's no, he's got so a social media account that the kids follow, and he's sitting here with us on watch, 12 to 4. Part of the team. Doesn't say much. He's got his <laughs> Nautilus uniform and everything. I love yes, it. Yes, he's got his <laughs> Nautilus shirt. We all have not, uh, slow mo stickers as well. Yeah. Oh, I put a bunch of slow mo stickers in the lounge for whoever wants to grab. Um, somebody wrote, "Hi, slow mo. What has been your favorite part of the cruise so far?" Uh, watches, I guess. He loves the watches. <laughs> It's about his pace, too. Yeah. <laughs> Slow-mo travels at 0. 0.2 knots per <laughs> second. Why move faster? Oh. <laughs> Somebody suggested the, the What Does the Fox Say song, but what would the song be uh, for cucumbers would be What What Does the Cuke Say? <laughs> that is so weird. It wants to rapidly come around. Uh, how old is Slomo? So Slomo is uh, about to turn eight years old. He's been the mascot for my classroom for eight years. And yes, he has a birthday because yes. my kids like to celebrate and throw a party. <laughs> so his birthday's uh, actually we're going to be out here when, on his birthday. It's November Ooh. 6th. Can Slomo do an Instagram takeover for the day? So he is going to do an Instagram takeover on Monday. Ooh. Yeah. Spice it up. Uh, wow, we got lots of slow mo questions. Slow -mo. <laughs> um, Are we, I, I think that we were discussing doing uh, slow mo it, gives a ship. Tour. Why would it want to come around like that? That would be amazing. I think we should like do that. Slow mo would totally be up for that. Yeah, okay. Um, somebody we'll asked, that asked that um, where else has slow mo visited? Slow mo got a start on the Joides Resolution, which is a, a drilling ship that collects cores. Uh, that we were on for two months in 2015 yeah. and became yeah, 2016. I don't want to move the ship. Because uh, anyway. we were there Christmas and New Year's. He has been like to, so basically the Indian Ocean, um, the Arctic, um, lots of places. Uh, he went to Panama and Colombia last year. He's He gets around. And now he's in the middle of the Pacific. No. Manal, you're a talented filmmaker. How would you like to take on Slow Mo Gives a Ship Tour? I would be honored. Right. <gasps> really? Actually, I would love to. Okay, let's do it. All right. 
Let's do it like on um, maybe Saturday. Where I'm not gonna have like interactions. Okay. On Saturday or Sunday. That sounds amazing. Okay, okay. so remember, slow mo, slow mo doesn't talk. He but doesn't. if you can, if you can do those slow buttery camera angles, oh. it really makes slow mo look longingly into each space. Yeah, we actually got a great, great frame of slow mo watching us, uh, watching us leave port. Ooh. On oh, the yeah. first day, I think it's yeah. sitting in your TikTok drafts, man. Yeah, there's the other. <laughs> Wait, slow mo has a TikTok? Oh yeah. So yeah, slow mo, slow mo has a TikTok. He's slow mo the sloth. S L O M O. I've never heard a more compelling reason to get on TikTok. And it's it's been challenging, but he does make videos and he has Instagram as well, which is Slow Mo Love Science. I'm curious. No, go ahead, Jonathan. I'm just curious what TikTok's algorithm would think if I started out with Slow Mo. Just like that's the only that's the only sloth I follow on TikTok. Oh, oh that would be fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> I'm be I'm trying to be better about putting out content. It's very difficult to make TikToks with a slow yeah, animal. Coming up the hill anyway. <laughs> no, that's a feature, not a bug. Just, yeah, just well, have him just be really Talking about thinking slow. positive, Jonathan, wow. Every day, uh, every day he just moves one paw a little <laughs> bit closer. It's yeah, like a time lapse. Coming up I have, during the, during the pandemic, during the, the remote year, I did do uh, like um, like motion one. capture. Like, Ooh. Yeah. Um, but I couldn't find an app that I really liked that would yeah. do that. But it was, and it was very time consuming. But well, what else are you going to do? I know, right? I am seeing Atalanta in the two fisheye lenses. Looking great. Curious, I don't see it in any other. Okay, come up. <laughs> we haven't received any requests for uh, Jonathan to sing. That's okay. He's just doing it on his own. I know. Disney and the Animaniacs. That's about it. What's your favorite Disney movie? Robin uh, Hood. Oh, Robin Hood's a good yeah, one. Yeah, a good one. And Lion King, of course. That, that, holds oh, a, yeah. that holds a special place in my heart. Yeah. How about yourself, Manal? Oh, that's a terrible question. As <laughs> I you brought asked on that my question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Lion King definitely holds a special place in my heart. I think lately I've just been really, I don't know, I really, I really like Moana. Not to oh, be yeah. an ocean explorer about it, but I really <laughs> like Moana. Just the songs are awesome. Yep. Uh, someone commented, Slomo needs a little PFD when he's doing those shots on or over the rail. So he actually does have a little life vest. Uh, and you can see it if you go um, to his almost Instagram, I think I posted, or maybe TikTok, I posted a picture of uh, the mustard drill. He was wearing it then. Ooh. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if I posted it. But yes, he has a little life jacket. He's so gone to see many times, so it was, it was necessary. <laughs> so Larry, how about yourself? What's your favorite Disney movie? Well, <laughs> my favorite Disney movie was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Oh, oh. Way, way, way back when they were really cartoons made yeah. with films yeah. and things like that. <laughs> and e even my children are too old to, to have. Uh, and they're they're poor for it. They're poor for it. Yeah. yeah. But, but I I know my uh, my granddaughter is just. Enamored with uh, I shouldn't the Little Mermaid is that a oh yeah uh, yeah 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 Little yeah. Mermaid yeah uh, that's the thing I, I got I got a note from her her mom after we greeted her from here the other day and and uh -huh. uh, the the note was uh, she wants us to find fifty mermaids so okay we're on it 
What if what We're if those zero. what if those grenadiers were in fact yeah, just each baby one mermaids? Was a mermaid, yeah. <laughs> I think that was it, her it Halloween custom. I think that was her Halloween custom this year. Oh, nice. On on the Wikipedia, it did say very little is known about their life cycle. So that's true. It, it could be they could have a mermaid phase. They are so always, in that case, we're over fifty, right? Or what? Yeah. <laughs> There's always room for hope. <laughs> Exploring the great ocean. My favorite was Sleeping Beauty. Oh, is that the one with the evil witch with the apple thing? No, uh, no, that's Snow White. White. Oh. Snow White. Oh. Well, then why was Sleeping Beauty sleeping? It was because she pricked her finger. Yeah, the right? finger. Yeah. What? You fell she asleep because you pricked her finger? Yeah, it yeah, was a poison. On the spinning wheel. S spinning wheel. Well, that's a what kind of poison was that? <laughs> the magical one. Some yeah. evil lady was mad and said, you know, I think it was an evil witch as well. <laughs> was it an evil queen or an evil witch? Yeah, it was, the, it was Maleficent. It, yeah. yeah. Oh, Maleficent's Maleficent. a good oh, Disney. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good mm -hmm. movie. Yeah. Angelina Jolie. Was, she did. Yeah, that yeah, was great. she did amazing in that role. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Ursula from the original Little Mermaid is pretty awesome. She that's had true. sass. Oh, oh man, I was afraid of <laughs> Ursula as a kid. My mom said I loved the movie The Little Mermaid, but I I just like wanted to cry anytime Ursula was on screen. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think my favorite classic Disney movie is Aladdin. Oh, um, yeah. that's a good one. That's a and good then one. my favorite modern Disney, like live action, is the Wakanda Forever. Um, hey. Uh, in the beginning yeah. scenes, they have a huge ship that has a, a uh, what is it, the vibranium detector, and it looks yeah. a lot like Hercules. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So it felt really cool to like watch that and like, oh, I, I go on a vessel similar to that. Not quite as big, but yeah, that, that movie is really, really well done. Yeah. The soundtrack is beautiful. Mm -hmm. The cast is amazing. Um, I don't understand why they had to make them blue, though. It's like Avatar came out at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering, is, like, is everyone going through some kind of water thing? Yeah. Or yeah. is that, I don't know if the comics followed. Oh, I'm we've not gone, sure. We've gone I've way off read. track of the ocean now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, it's Wakanda forever. That keeps it, that keeps it ocean related. <laughs> uh, somebody asked are the ROVs ascending does somebody want to give an update on what we're doing yeah right now the ROV is actually uh, quite a bit off the bottom 30, 30, 40 meters and we're doing that to optimize the mapping the sonar mapping which uh, can cover a much larger area and so it's, it's better for us to stand off uh, if we were close to the bottom the sonar beams would, would not cover much of an area so we're going to do that for a little while then we'll go back to getting close to the bottom and seeing what it looks like there. This sonar map, though, will give us a much, much better picture of the overall structure of the area. And you can see that sonar map on feed three. Jonathan? Uh, I can go check out my data. Okay. If you see anything amazing like a sperm well, press enter. Just press we'll enter. The, okay. The time lapse, so we'll at least get a okay. good All right. In the water column. Someone's commenting that Slomo has a new follower on TikTok and the gram. Uh, and I, I'm checking and I did not post a picture of him in his life vest, so I'm going to do that right now. What did you say Slomo's Instagram was? Slomo loves science. Loves science. I had yeah. does science. Oh. 
found slow mo. Uh, and there, I just posted a picture of him in his little uh, PFD. Thanks for following slow mo. Someone's got a question about if the lasers are still going to be used with the new camera system. Yeah, they, they, uh, Jonathan likes them to come on every once in a while um, to give him a, a sense of scale, just as you asked in the, in the question, because uh, they'll be a, a, what we call a fiducial. We know that, that space between them is 10 centimeters, so it gives him a, a good metric. But um, he doesn't like to keep them on all the time. So what we were doing yesterday when we were doing a, a camera run for him was once an hour we put them on, do that calibration, and then no. and turn them back off. And Larry, would you mind explaining the map again? Because somebody's asking yeah, about right, that. Yeah, right. Right now, Chris has a, another plot in front of it, so you have to ignore the the blue and red squiggles that, that Chris has there. But under, actually, if you look in the the upper left corner of a uh, little uh, kind of reddish uh, image in the upper left corner, it's now fading. Uh, that's actually showing real time what the sonar is uh, as it's sweeping. Um, and the, the bright, the bright uh, line on the bottom, slightly slanted, that's the detection of each of the beams of the sonar on the bottom. The radial pattern doesn't represent the bottom at all. It represents uh, what we call a, a side load. Uh, and so that will be ignored when the data is analyzed. And the kind of first pass at analyzing the data is the little bit of yellow and green that you see which are which are representative of the depths the ranges that the sonar has measured to the bottom and that range is converted to a depth based on uh, our understanding of the speed of sound in the water and so it looks a little uh, messy right now because we're seeing the beams kind of spread all around but Chris will take that data put it into some software and we'll get a very very smooth uh, and nice plot of the the depth, the surrounding depths um, before very long. Yeah, I am now. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I can see. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're standing by. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>
Okay, just stand by. Uh, we're waiting on some ROV management.
Hey everybody, this is uh, Jason. Just wanted to update the van. Uh, as you can see in Sat One, uh, at Atlanta's gotten hung up on what looks to be uh, some synthetic braided rope, uh, likely uh, fishing equipment of some sort. So we've gotten ourselves set up here to, uh, luckily, one of the things that's always on Hercules is a knife. And so they're going to use the, uh, the port side manipulator to grab the rope. And then you'll see them uh, unsheath a knife to cut through this rope. And we've set ourselves up so that the current is coming from right to left on the screen. And hopefully that uh, will blow the rope away from us, but also to be concerned about is that Atlanta is going to now be released from kind of being tensioned by this rope and so Herc might get pulled a little bit this isn't uh, it's unfortunate this is probably just trash in the ocean um, but it's not uncommon to get followed and that's why the pilots routinely carry uh, knives like this to access on the front of the vehicle Have you marked this as a highlight? Yeah, okay. uh, Madison. So to cut the rope, you can imagine if there's no tension on the rope, just having it in one manipulator is going to make for it very difficult to cut. So we've got to keep a bit of tension on it, though when we do get through the rope, the, that tension is going to cause at Atlanta to move much more rapidly than we're used to, swing through the water column. So uh, a few dynamics here at play, uh, but at Atlanta pulling Herc uh, is okay. The, that yellow umbilical is um, more than capable of supporting any sort of uh, yank or, or toe of Herc from Atlanta. So it'll be just, it's uh, definitely out of the norm.
So Dan's probably going to have to They're going to transfer the knife here to Mongo, the port side manipulator. And then he's going to likely use the craft arm to pull the, the rope against the knife. There's, it's a little less capable of a manip. We'll see how. K2, do you think we can use the lasers to cut the rope? Is that uh, a possibility? If they would have chose the lasers that I wanted, <laughs> yeah, we could have, but. Just trying to cut the tension here a little bit. <laughs> but um bump. <laughs> okay, so this was a. Uh, pass and pass back. So the craft arm will have the knife and Mongo will have the rope and they'll kind of cut just like you would at home if you have a dominant hand you'll have the the knife in the more com you know more than the more comfortable hand to operate and then use Mongo to hold the rope in position. The pilot has a miniature version of the arm. N no. No, they, they would have to go, hold on.
so the <coughs> just to kind of narrate what's likely happening, the pilots aren't aren't on headsets because the leadership's kind of huddled in the front row here. But uh, yeah. It's Pilots are likely working on umbilical management between the two vehicles. So Herc now had to f basically fly over the vehicle and ensure that it didn't wrap itself in its own umbilical just to get close with this approach. Um, so they're going to want to maintain some tension between the 6-8 so that the when Mongo grabs the rope, they've got something to scratch the knife against you know um not too much because we don't want to go for too far a ride and get into some other hairy situation but this looks like a pretty ideal setup to to do this So that rope is moving because at Atlanta's moving because it's directly connected to the ship and uh, the ship's affected by sea state. So this just just getting the manipulators onto the target here is is a challenge in itself. So ROVs can take down all kinds of tools. There's cable cutters and you know all sorts of hydraulically operated tools for very specific missions. We happen to be focused on using this camera system and the Norbit on this dive. And so those things uh, we don't have on board. <laughs> We've got this trusty yellow, <laughs> yellow nice to get us out of this jam. Almost. So lots of consideration with the umbilical between Atlanta and Herc. You know the the umbilical can take the tension between quite the tension pulling between the vehicles. But if it's tied in a loop or not, when if the if Atlanta does kind of move fairly rapidly and and tugs on Herc, that could be more problematic than you know, a significant jolt without that knot. So trying not to tie ourselves up here is important. This is an odd perspective. Typically at Atlanta is well above Herc and so now here we're looking at looking at it. The football floats are rarely seen from Herc cameras. Those are the white floats on the umbilical that keeps it um, uh, catenary between the two vehicles and kind of a knowable um, angle of the umbilical. The current is pushing right to left. 
You can kind of see that a little bit in the marine snow that's going across the screen. Um, that'll blow the, um, the umbilical between the two vehicles the same way from right to left. Forty-seven meters off the bottom. So there is a lot of lines in the in the ocean. The along the seafloor, there you'll find fiber optic cables that connect the land masses. Most of the world's internet travels over fiber optic cables, and then the fishing industry uh, has a lot of lost gear or gear that's been abandoned, and insurance claims, and all kinds of nefarious reasons to leave it in the ocean. It's a lot easier to dump it than to probably dispose of it properly and so disappointing that you find stuff like this there's also fish aggregation devices these are a little bit like what we're seeing here it's a, a big heavy clump of some sort connected to uh, polypropylene and then almost got it that time and then some sort of floating mass up in the water column and that's designed that the fishermen would deploy this only know where they would be the only ones that know where this device is and the fish love structure right it's safety for them and then the, the fish that prey on the little fish are coming after them there and so these schools can aggregate along these devices and it's really really problematic for people like us who they're not on charts through these secret little uh, fishing spots that the fishermen create and you run into debris like this um, because of it Once we get out of this, as we do our survey back up, maybe we'll see the anchor that's uh, the other end of this line and get some indication of what we got snagged on. So the worst scenario here is that Dan's been really careful, but Herc getting fouled on this line too. Now we have the manipulators to kind of get ourselves untangled, but it's just a lot going on with the line moving. So Mongo's all the way open. So that's as wide a grip as we can get. So this, the movement isn't from Herc. This is, this is the ship in Atlanta tugging on this line that's causing the line to move around in the water.
depth perception is really, really difficult. So you've got to almost use shadows to to understand how close or how far you are. And the rope's so small, it's hard to see a shadow on it. So the umbilical has a minimum bend radius, so we want to be really careful not to put too many turns. It's got a fiber optic. It's a very hair thin piece of glass within that umbilical. It's all the data from the vehicles come up, be transferred up at the speed of light to the ship. And uh, it's amazingly capable, but also fairly fragile. So you can't bend it too sharply. And so you, you just might've saw that uh, that image of the umbilical with the bend in it, that was getting close to minimum bend radius. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, to I really appreciate Dan Cormery, the... Do we have any idea what they're connected? No. We didn't see anything on the bottom. We were doing the Norbit survey, so we were, had, we were like 25 meters off. The... Uh, I've always kind of... saying has resonated with me this... The slow is smooth, smooth is fast. And so uh, as we kind of identified that Atlanta was hung up, you know, Dan was, his first instinct was to slow down and take a step back. And uh, it really allowed us to get all the variables into the discussion and make a really informed decision on how we wanted to approach this. And, and really, I think, yeah, so they're, they just stepped back to catch their breath and try this again sounds like they may tension the the wire with that Atlanta a little bit to get the the uh, line that we're caught on a little bit more vertical just again making it a bit easier to grab there also is the the thought that the the tensions on our winch we can we're monitoring kind of second by second um, didn't spike as we got hooked on or caught on whatever this was so 
kind of implying that the clump or the weight that's that was keeping it on the seafloor isn't that heavy and so that we could just recover to the surface with this thing attached and potentially cut it off when we get near the ship so if this becomes too difficult or the threat of her getting hung up on this line you know is uh too great that might be our fallback Looks like the uh, it looks like the angle of the line is changing. We potentially just drug the clump on the seabed. If I had to guess. Yeah, they're trying to get sorted. Yeah. Yep. I think that line, the angle of that line changed on one of these last few swells. I don't think whatever it is, is that heavy. K2, if you think that's valuable input, you're uh, you're the only one in the conversation with the headset on. Yeah, we were, they, we were just 